using this thrifted box that I found last week in Asheville at a Goodwill. We are going to make this awesome little box into a strawberry planter. And I have already cleaned, wiped it down, and drilled a few holes in the bottom for drainage before even bringing it in. We are going to be using this Irish chalk paint color. I believe I'm going to use the oatmeal. I need the red, which is 34153 Imperial. And there was one more I was thinking about using besides the oatmeal. So we may just do a color test swatch to see which, which one I prefer. But the other one I'm considering is 34151, which is sheepskin. A couple of different brushes. And um, I also used my Cricut to create a stencil. We are going to need one other thing, and that is a clear outdoor protective coat. So, let's get started. We have just made sure that all of our chalk paint is well combined. It was already in pretty good shape. So let's just take a look. Because that's not really white. The sheepskin is not white, which is nice. Uh, let's just rinse that off real quick. And let's try this, uh, what did I say it was? Oatmeal? Oatmeal. I think I'm still going to use this sheep skin. The other colors that will show up better. Oh, there, so let's put this one back. So we are going to pour a little of this sheep skin. This is just to get us started. We're probably gonna need a little more. And I'm only painting, I'm not painting the inside at all. I'm gonna paint around here and all the sides. Let's just jump in with our brush and let's get started. So, we are still going to, once we get this one coat on here, we will be uh, just roughing it up a little bit and with some uh, fine grit sandpaper or a sanding block. All of those outdoor sounds and listening to the weed eaters and the lawn mowers and leaf blowers is a reminder that I need to get outside and get my pollinator bed ready. I had left it with all the seed heads and everything through the winter in case the birds needed something to eat. We live in an area that's got a large bear population and so it makes it really hard to help feed the birds through the winter time. It rarely gets cool enough that our bears actually hibernate. So they are out most of the winter. They may go in for a few weeks, but they do not stay in for long. So it makes it hard to determine when you can set out feeders and, and when you can't. So do you do any raised bed gardening? I have a few raised beds. I already have uh, some snap peas planted. We have garlic, yummy, yummy garlic. What else have I got in the ground? The dill is already starting to come up. I've got carrots in the ground. I'm trying to remember what else I planted. Uh, there's a few other things. I just can't think of them right now. But you know, whenever you're thinking about gardening, there are so many, you know, different ways to garden. And sometimes people just don't think about what they already have. I have a friend that found a old bookcase laying by the side of the road. I already had the slats in it. And she actually just laid that bookcase down in her backyard, filled it up with soil, and planted a garden in it. It's a small garden, 
but still it was a very easy uh, creative way to get that started so let's see how we're doing on all these sides I think everything's looking good so we are just going to let this dry for a minute so we let the chalk paint dry and then I went outside and I don't know if you can kind of see where I've roughed up just the the obvious edges where over time it would have gotten beaten up anyway just basically all of these little sharp edges uh, and I just roughed that up a little bit with a fine grit sandpaper we are going to just eyeball this as we put it put it on this box so let me just get this stencil on here all right so we're just going to we're going to just look at the bottom it looks pretty good side to side i think we look it's not pressed down until we're sure that we are pretty straight and I think we're close enough so I'm just going to start at the middle and I'm just going to make one pass with my hands real quick then we're just going to take a moment and we are going to burnish the stencil onto our box let's see this is going to work well for us for me whenever I am using the transfer tape if I keep a sharp edge right there, not trying to pull it up like this, but just, you know, keep it nice and taut and pull at this type of an angle that I have quite a bit of success getting, getting everything to stay on the actual backboards. There we go. Let's take another look. I think it's gonna be so cute. When you're using your chalk paint with a stencil like this, it is important not to paint, not to do this. You always want to just pounce that color on. And what that is going to do is that is going to keep your paint from having the opportunity to run. Okay, let's get started with our red. I'm going to start with this that's on the lid. We are just going to apply a coat. Try not to get into those leaves. Don't go over the edge. And we are going to pounce, pounce out this design. But I'm going to do a really light coat. And I'm going to do one more coat after that dries. Not exactly 100% sure how I'm going to do these strawberries and get those, but we will figure it out as we go along. How's that, do you think? Pretty good? Okay, so that is coat number one. So I am going to let that dry for a few minutes. And we're going to come back and we're going to do a second coat on the green and the red. Then I'm going to peel these pieces off and we're going to figure out how we're going to do the strawberries. So, it's a plan. So, while I was waiting for that to dry, obviously got a cup of coffee and grabbed a couple of Q-tips to help me paint in those little very specialized 
areas. Let's jump back into this. Okay, get our green back out, coverage on there, and let's just start pouncing. Remember, we are doing just a couple of white coats, so just keep that in mind. Let's do the red. around these edges too. We're getting kind of close. Got a pretty good coat. Let's grab the other. We just got a little bit of fun there. Well, we might I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to go back and remove these little strawberry pieces which I could actually probably do now let's just go ahead and do that we are going to make that whole piece our strawberry We're going to finish letting the green dry and then we're going to go in and we are going to fill in our little red strawberries. So we pounced around the stencil part and then around this other location where we have pulled the stencil away we are just trying to do a little detail work to get the rest of the strawberry painted in. Here we have that. Let's just put this in a little water to hold. Okay, so we're gonna go back and we are going to stamp around these edges one more time and go back in with our detailed paintbrush and do that one more time just to add a second little layer. After that dries, we will peel off the stencil. So let's see where we're at with this. careful pulling this off. One of the reasons that we used thinner coats of paint and let them dry in between was so hopefully we don't create a spot where the paint is going to pull up while we are doing this process. So you just want to be careful because we do not want to pull up all that hard work that we just finished. Some of my paint came off during that process. That's fine with me. I'm not going for a look of perfection. What I do not like is, you can see where even though I dabbed, dab, dabbed, I still had a couple of little places come out of their areas. And, is there anything else that's really bothering me? Nope. Let's put a few dots on our strawberries 
To do that, I'm using a stylus, but you could use, um, this is probably in the best example, but you could use the end of a paintbrush to do a similar effect. And the way we're gonna do that is basically, I'm just going to load up my stylus with some paint. And what I did was I just mixed some uh, of the Imperial um, paint with the rich black to get a little darker shade because you, normally on strawberries you either see a little red or the, uh, almost the same color seed or you see the little yellow ones or at least that's what I normally see. So I'm going to try to use um, a red on red but I want them to be a little bit darker so that they do show up. So Let's just start down here. I'm going to start on this one because I think it's probably the most viewable one. And I'm just going to put more pressure and then kind of let up as I pull away to create those little, my little strawberry seeds. Just keep going here and keep making our strawberry seeds. I do load every single time with this stylus. Every single time I'm going to create a new seed, I'm going to load this tool. See, I didn't do it that time. It just doesn't work. You don't. Don't take the time to load it. Thank you for joining me for this DIY planter project. Before we wrap up, I will be applying a clear coat to give it that perfect outdoor finish. Then we'll add some strawberry plants and soil to complete the look. I appreciate you joining me on this crafting journey. If you decide to try something similar, I'd love to see your creations. Share them with me by tagging at The Practicing Crafter on Facebook or Instagram. Until next time, get out there, get creative with your planters, make them uniquely yours, and most importantly, just enjoy the process of bringing your projects to life. Happy crafting!